One of the most important aspects of Minecraft is of course the mining. I mean, it takes up half the name. Look up any Minecraft parody and nine times out of 10, they're talking about mining. Being one of the game's core elements, there are a lot of different things a player can collect while mining. Technically, that could refer to any time the player breaks a block, but when most people say mining, they mean underground. When mining underground, the primary thing most people are looking for are the game's several different ores. Or you could be a weirdo trying to get granted, I don't know. These ores are incredibly useful, as they're what allow you to create tools, armor, and a large assortment of other things that can be used in a number of different ways. With there being so many ores though, some are bound to be worse than others, so today, I thought it'd be fun to rank every ore in Minecraft from the worst to the best. But first off, what am I counting as? an ore. I could just consider what has an ore block, but I feel like that wouldn't quite be the full picture. Luckily, I think the Trails and Tails update made what I should count pretty clear. In that update, armor trims were added, and to color them, you have to use ore materials. There are 10 different armor trim colors, so this list will consist of the 10 ores that you can use to make armor trims. Plus cool because it didn't get an armor trim. Loser! Now, if you've seen my other ranking videos, only 11 different things may seem short, but I assure you there is a lot to consider here. In fact, I think this may have been my hardest Minecraft ranking to date. Can't wait to get executed in the comments. I'll be ranking these ores purely based on how useful I think they are to a Java survival world. This includes crafting recipes and any other uses it might have outside of it. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, at 200k I'm ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right into the list. Now despite me saying this list was super hard to put together, last place was honestly pretty easy. 11. Amethyst. These are found exclusively in amethyst geodes, which are really cool clusters of amethyst blocks and calcite. Amethyst shards will grow on the budding amethyst block, and since each full cluster drops 8 to 16 shards with fortune 3, it's quite easy to collect a large amount. Of the 11 ores we're going to cover today though, it definitely has the least amount of useful uses. For starters, you can't use it to make any armor or tools. Now an ore doesn't need to make those things for it to still be useful, but it certainly helps quite a bit. Well, if it can't be used for that, then what can it amethyst be used for. As of 1.20.1, the amethyst shard has six uses. We already saw the armor trim before, but moving past that, it can be used to craft four different items. First is the block of amethyst, which can look kind of nice, I guess, but it's not my absolute favorite block in the game by a long shot. I'm more of a cut sandstone slab fan myself. It does have some uses outside of decoration with skulk redstone, but that's a pretty niche field. Speaking of, amethyst can also be used to make the calibrated skulk sensor. This basically acts as a way to filter out what sounds a sensor is listening for by inputting a redstone signal. Depending on the level of the redstone, it will change what sound it's looking for. I'm sure that can be helpful, but it's pretty dang specific. The other two items I do like a good amount though. It's used to make spy glasses, which I always like to use to spy on my friends. I don't have any. Finally, it can be used to craft tinted glass, a really neat item that lets us see through it, but keeps light out. I personally use it all the time in mob farms. Now, outside of that, there is one other use I forgot the last time I had to list what the amethyst shard can do. The fact that it can breed a lays. Who cares? It's a stupid mob anyway. But to me, this collection of uses is definitely the weakest of the ores we're going to see today. Lucky for me, I don't think this will be too controversial either, so amethyst can comfortably take last place. 10. Copper. This is the only other one that's really in the running for last place, so why do I think this is better than the Amethyst Shard? Well, first let's start off with how you can obtain copper. There are three primary methods to do it. The most obvious is of course just mining the ore, which can be found very easily. On top of just being very common, each ore can also drop up to 20 raw copper with Fortune 3. Drowned are also able to drop copper too, so if you really want to, you can set up an automatic copper farm. Finally, while this isn't technically out yet, I feel like I might as well mention the upcoming trial chambers, which have the copper family of blocks as a major component. Normally I would wait for an update to come out before considering it in a ranking video, but since we know copper is going to get a lot of changes, I might as well cover it. But speaking of copper blocks, that's the main reason you'll want to collect this ore. In my opinion, the copper block is much easier to use in builds than amethyst, and that's also helped by having a billion different variations. If we include the new ones we see in 1.20.1, we have normal copper, cut copper, cut copper stairs, cut copper slabs, chiseled copper, copper grates, copper doors, copper trap doors, and copper bulbs. Now that's already a lot, but each of those have four different stages of oxidation. By leaving a copper related block out, it will slowly become more green over time, which can be used to add some really nice detail to builds. And on top of that, all of these blocks can be waxed to prevent further decay, which leads to a grand total of 72 copper building blocks. With so many variations, it also gifted us with the current longest item name in the game. My beloved, the wax weathered cut copper stairs. Now obviously not everyone will want to build with these. Personally, I haven't made a big copper build yet, but I'm definitely going to try and recreate some of Steam Gardens for Mario Odyssey with all the new blocks. On top of the large assortment of decorative blocks, copper has gotten a few other good uses as well. It can be used in armor trims and the spyglass which we already mentioned, but it also got the lightning rod. This is very helpful for stopping lightning from hitting villagers and turning them into witches. And also you can make this. The copper bulb is also a redstone component. Since it can give a comparator output, it can be used to make a very compact tea flip-flop. Finally, copper can also be used to make brushes, which allow you to get pottery shirts from suspicious sand and gravel. Yes, shirts. Look at the name, it says shirts. Not shards, shirts. 
I got a billion comments saying I pronounced this item's name wrong in my structure ranking, but I was right. It's still going, it never ends, you're all just wrong! Anyway, the reason copper is low is just because most of its uses are more for decoration, which is still definitely useful, don't get me wrong, but I think it's fair to say that the other ores are much more practical. 9. Lapis. This is where things definitely start to get a lot trickier, and I imagine more controversial as well. There are a few ways to get this. You'll mostly be getting it from ores as they can drop up to 36 lapis lazuli each with fortune 3. If you can't find any though, it can also be gotten from villager trades and a few structure chests. Now for lapis's uses, this is where things start to get a bit tricky. Also, I'm not going to mention armor trims anymore, just assume everything has a coal. This only really has three uses, technically less than the two ores we saw before. But if you look at what those uses are, you can see why I put it higher. It can be turned into blue dye, which is required to make pretty much any blue block in the game. So if you're trying to make a giant Sonic the Hedgehog, you're gonna need this. Lapis can also be turned into a block of lapis as well, which is purely decorative. It's probably the least useful ore block just because there are so many other blue blocks in the game, but hey, it's nice having more options. The final use is the most important though, as lapis is used in enchanting. Obviously, enchanting your gear is a must as it gets you better tools and better armor. Every max level enchantment requires three lapis, so it's definitely something you'll want to be collecting. But with that said, why is something with pretty solid uses so low? Well, beside armor trimming and the lapis, lapis block, you don't have to use lapis for its main uses. For blue dye, you could easily just get it from cornflowers, one of the most common flower types in the game. For enchanting, you could just ignore the table entirely and use books, which don't require any lapis. Sure, that is much harder, but the fact that lapis can be mostly avoided does make it a bit less useful than the ores we have in the rest of the list. Keep in mind again, this ranking is really close, so any downside is going to hurt these ores. Still, lapis can be quite useful, so I think it's earned its spot. 8 Coal. Here we have what might just be the most common ore in the game. It's also one of the ones you'll definitely be using the most. For obtaining, you can get it from structure chests, the ore, and also wither skeletons, opening up a good way to farm for it. Now, I think pretty much everyone is well aware of its uses. Let's just start with the main two. They're used to make torches and smelt things in furnaces. Torches are the easiest slice source to get your hands on in the game, which make them essential in mining. Wandering in dark areas is very dangerous because you never know when something might jump out at you. Smelting things also gives you access to cooked food, various different blocks, and the ingot forms of some raw ore. Coal will let you smelt 8 items, which is a pretty good amount. There's absolutely no denying that these are both incredibly important uses, but coal is also not the only thing that can do this. Yeah, so by just smelting a log, you can get charcoal, which also lets you make torches and smelt eight items. On top of that, while it is less resource efficient, you can just use wooden stuff for fuel. Now, coal is, for the most part, much more convenient to use, but I have certainly used quite a bit of charcoal. In fact, charcoal can be used for a lot of coal's other uses too, which includes soul torches, campfires, and fire charges. However, charcoal can't replace coal in two different aspects. First, only coal can be used to make the coal block, which can sometimes be useful while building or smelting since it can smelt 80 different items at once. Coal Coal can also be traded to villagers for emeralds, but in my opinion, there are much better trades. So in the end, coal is definitely useful, there's no denying that, but since it can be replaceable, I think I'm gonna put it here on the list. 7 Emeralds This is one of the most difficult ores to evaluate. While you can get it from mining, 99% of the population will get it from villager trading. This is what runs the villager economy, as it's used in every single trade. These can be used to get a ton of different items from villagers. I'm not going to go over everything in this video, but if you really want to know, you can watch my villager rank. But some of the highlights include all diamond armor and tools, the best food source in the game with golden carrots, and of course, enchantment books. Those books from villager trading are pretty much the only reliable way to get mending as well, the by far best enchantment in the game. Now this is all extremely useful useful, but again, you technically don't need to get these items through villager trading since they aren't exclusive. Except the globe pattern, I guess. In this case, though, villager trading for mending books is so much better than any other method that it still gets to place quite well. Outside of trading, you can also make emerald blocks, which definitely have an interesting look. These are actually our first ore blocks that can be used to make a beacon, so you could definitely do a lot of trading to get the full pyramid. It's also the only ore block to get an exclusive note block sound. So retro. The emerald has definitely got some pretty solid uses, so I think it deserves to be placed up here. 6. Gold. Here we have it, almost halfway through the list, and we have our first ore that can actually be used to make armor and tools. Sadly though, it's probably the one you'll use the least. Gold armor and tools are defined by the fact that they break super quickly, like they have less uses than wood tools. They do actually mine faster than even netherites, but the low durability makes them far too impractical to actually use. So what puts it up so high then? Well, that would of course come from its other uses. To start off though, I want to mention that obtaining gold can actually be pretty efficient. Not only does it have ores in both the overworld and nether, but it can also be dropped by zombified Piglin. Zombified Piglin farms are some of the most efficient farms in the game, meaning you could easily get a large amount of gold. Sticking with the Piglin, gold can also be used in bartering, and while it is random what items you get, you can easily set up an automatic bartering system with a gold farm to collect a lot of useful resources. This can include stuff like gravel, quartz, and iron. If you want to keep gold to yourself though, there are plenty of other useful things you can craft with it, like a clock. 
Golden carrots are obviously made from gold, though personally, I prefer getting them from villager trades. Powered rails are extremely important for anything involving minecarts, which can include things like several different farms, super smelters, and obviously just travel. Gold blocks are also pretty nice as well. Not only can they be used in beacons, but I also just love how they look in general. Of the ore blocks, this is probably the one I've used the second most in decoration. Very importantly though, four gold ingots are also required to make a netherite ingot, which are used to upgrade your diamond gear into netherite. Since that is currently the most powerful armor and tool tier, that's pretty dang important. So yeah, gold definitely has a large selection of uses, and while its tools may not be much help aside from deterring piglin, this ore still absolutely deserves to place highly on the list. 5. Quartz I feel like this will be by far the most controversial choice on this list, so let me explain. Most people I imagine would have this place much lower, maybe even close to copper at the bottom. To me though, I think quartz is extremely valuable. This is the first ore we've seen to be exclusive to the nether, and it can be found pretty much anywhere. While you can only get a max of 4 per ore with fortune, it's so common that it won't be much of an issue. Alright, but what can it be used for? Well primarily, it's to make the quartz family of blocks, which are purely decorative. Now hearing that, you may think I've gone insane because that was also copper's main use. The thing about quartz blocks though, I just like them more. There are nine different ones you can make. The basic quartz, quartz stairs, quartz slabs, chiseled quartz, quartz bricks, quartz pillars, smooth quartz, smooth quartz stairs, and smooth quartz slabs. While that is less than the 72 copper offers, I just find these to be so much more usable. I think probably about a third of the builds I've made in the last 10 years have used quartz blocks in some way. They're just that good. The pillar might be my personal favorite just because you can place it directionally like a log, but I have used all of these thousands of times. Now that definitely is a major opinion factor, and while obviously all ranking videos are opinion based, I did want to focus this more on practicality. Lucky for us though, quartz is more than decoration, as just like copper, it can be used to make a few redstone components, only these are significantly more important ones. It's used in the crafting recipe for three, starting off with the daylight sensor. This is definitely the weakest of the bunch, but being able to tell if it's night or day can be useful for things like turning on lamps but only at night. The other two though, are massive game changers. The observer is able to detect if the block in front of its face updates, which is absurdly powerful. This can be used in so many automatic farms, sugarcane definitely being the easiest as you can see when it grows and then chop it down. It's not even just farms though, flying machines can be made much easier with these things along with this generally compacting redstone. If that wasn't enough though, quartz is also used in crafting the comparator, which has a billion different uses. The main one though is to detect the amount of items in a container, which is useful for all sorts of things like item sorters and the upcoming crafter block. So yeah, quartz has both really nice looking blocks and incredibly practical redstone components, so to me, I think it deserves this spot. But if that hasn't convinced you, it can also craft diorite. Oh. Or diamond. This is by far Minecraft's most iconic ore. It's what motivates so many people to strip mine for hours because you could always just be one block away from finding diamonds keep gambling. But if it's so good, what's it doing down at number 4? Well, let's just cover its uses. It's obviously most known for the fact that it can make diamond armor and tools, which are the most powerful in the game for years. Having the best armor and tools would obviously make it a must-have for most people. On top of that though, diamonds are required to make an enchantment table, which as I mentioned previously, is stupid important as well. So yeah, all of that clearly makes the diamond deserving of placing pretty high, but then what? I mean, once you have diamond armor, tools, and an enchanting table, why bother finding more diamonds? Jukeboxes are definitely worth the craft, but again, you kind of only need one and then you're set. Diamond blocks do look nice, it can be used in beacons, but without a way to farm diamonds, it's certainly one of the least practical beacon blocks. You can use diamonds to get emeralds from villagers, but again, same farming issue. Uh, you can make fireworks stars, I don't know. So for a long time, you really didn't need to collect diamonds past getting your gear. Luckily, they did add armor trims, which require seven diamonds to duplicate. And unluckily, the netherite upgrade template, which is in the same boat. Since that's used to upgrade diamond to netherite though, that is technically a good use for diamond. So yeah, diamonds are kind of mixed. It's an absolute absolute essential in getting the most powerful gear, but past that, it doesn't really have much else. 3. Netherite This is basically just a better diamond. This is our final nether exclusive ore, and it's by far the rarest ore in the game. It takes hours to find all the netherite you need to get a full set of armor and tools, but that honestly makes it pretty exciting whenever you do find ancient debris. This also works a bit differently from other ores, as each ancient debris will give you a netherite scrap. From there, you need 4 scraps and 4 gold ingots to make a netherite ingot, which can then be used to upgrade any piece of diamond gear to netherite. So for the simple reason of being a better diamond, it gets to place above it. There are a few more uses it has outside of gear though. It can be used to make a lodestone, which I think only an insane person would do, and it can be used to make another right block. Now I said that the gold block was the one I've used the second most behind quartz earlier, but that's only because the netherite block is so hard to get. I love how this looks so much, but in order to craft it, you need to find 36 ancient debris, which is absolutely devastating. If it wasn't so hard, I'd be using this in so many builds. I guess that does make it a pretty cool beacon flex, but if you want a full netherite beacon, that's going to cost you 5,904 
ancient debris. Yeah, if you do that, I think you should just be locked up. You're a danger to yourself and others. So for having the best gear and tools in the game and a really nice looking block, I'm putting it at number three. But the last two ores we have on this list, in my opinion, deserve to be far above the rest. I could definitely see an argument for either one of these taking the top spot, but I think they both have to be up here. For me though, the runner-up belongs to two, redstone. If you want to build literally any machine in Minecraft, you need redstone. I've mentioned it so much throughout this video for good reason, it's just incredibly important. Want to make a piston door? You need redstone for that. Want to make a farm of basically anything? Nine times out of ten, you're going to need redstone or its components. Want to make a pig torture device? Well yeah, you need redstone for that, what's wrong with you. I'm honestly having a hard time putting my thoughts into words for this entry because of just how essential this is to building any machine in the game. I mean, it's the wiring that lets these machines run, and it's the only thing in the game that can do what it does. It's also just used in the crafting recipe for most components you'd use to make the machines as well. It's used to make blocks of redstone, detector rails, dispensers, droppers, note blocks, observers, pistons, powered rails, redstone lamps, repeaters, redstone torches, target blocks, copper bulbs, and crafters, all of which can be used in different ways to make these machines work. On top of that, it can be used to increase the duration of potions, which is a must for any player who uses them. Oh, it can also make clocks and compasses. Truly game changers. The uses for redstone are practically limitless. There are so many YouTubers that are centered around making new machines just with this ore. I can easily understand why someone would put this at number one, but what do I think holds it back? Well, it's funnily enough the reason so many people like it, its complexity. While I and many others love it because of what it can be used to make, a lot of players sort of avoid redstone because of how hard it is to learn. I can certainly understand that, especially for younger players. But I think redstone uses are just so good that it has to place at number two anyway. But no matter your skill level, there's one ore that's always useful. One, iron. Iron ingots are one of the most useful items in the game as they are used in probably the most different scenarios out of any other item. For starters, it can be used to craft armor and tools, which are must-haves early game to not only survive, but also collect other resources like diamond. Once you outgrow iron gear though, you're not quite done with iron because of the sheer number of crafting recipes it's part of. Let's just go down the list, shall we? Activator rails are probably the most specific of rail types, but if you ever want to set up TNT minecart traps, they're your best bet. Anvils are a massively important block. Not only can they be used to rename items and repair tools, but they're also used to apply enchantment books to items. Certain enchantments, like mending, can only be gotten from books, so in order to max out your gear, you are required to get an anvil. The blast furnace is extremely useful in saving time when smelting ores as they cook them at twice the speed. Blocks of iron not only look really nice for building, but are also great choices for beacons as well. Plus, you can even make iron golems with them. Buckets are extremely important as they can carry water, lava, milk, powdered snow, and fish. Water is always good to have on hand so you can save yourself if you ever get put into a tricky situation. Cauldrons can be used to farm lava and powdered snow, which is impossible otherwise. Chains and iron bars don't have any practical uses, but are both extremely nice decoration blocks. I personally use them all the time. Compasses are required to make maps, and I always have a map board in any world I'm in. The crafter is one of the most important redstone items added in years, letting us automatically craft whatever we want. Crossbows are neat. Detector rails are useful for making any redstone machine involving minecarts. Flint and steel is the best way to make fire, which is most important in lighting nether portals. The heavy-weighted pressure plate sure is an item that exists. The hopper might just be the most important use of iron as it is used in every farm in the game. It automatically picks up and moves items, essentially being the only reason automatic farms can work without a player having to pick stuff up. In my experience, this is what most of your iron will go toward. Iron doors and trap doors are good for decoration and are different from normal doors as they need redstone to open. Iron nuggets are used in several other recipes, most notably lanterns, one of my favorite lighting blocks in the game. Minecarts are very helpful in transportation in certain farms. Plus, it's also a really good move in Smash Bros. I love making people mad with it. Pistons are able to move blocks, which is fantastic for machinery. Rails are obviously needed for anything minecart related. Shears let you mine and keep blocks like leaves and cobwebs, and also get wool from sheep without murder. Too bad I was looking for mud. Shields are essential in combat, especially against skeletons to deflect arrows. Smithing tables are required to get netherite gear and armor trims. The stone cutter makes building with any stone related blocks significantly easier and more resource efficient. And finally, the tripwire hook can be used in traps. That is a lot of different uses, which spread across to so many different aspects of the game. That's not even including the fact you can trade iron to villagers for emeralds. Add on the iron farms are efficient and easy to build, and I think we have a clear winner for the best ore Minecraft has to offer. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you obsessed with soul campfires and hate me for putting coal so low on the list? Let me know in the comments. I had a lot of fun coming up with the ordering on this list, so hopefully this video was enjoyable for you guys as well. I hope they keep adding in more ores in the future like amethyst and copper. Even if they did place low, I love their inclusions. Most of all, I hope this ranking wasn't too controversial because it was definitely one of the hardest ones I've had to put together. But anyways, dry bones for smash, and I'll see you guys next time.